I'm Isabella, I'm 25 years old and I come from Italy. My name is Mandy, I'm 17 years old, I'm from Afghanistan, I'm a student in Luxembourg. Thank you for joining me here at MUDAM to see the exhibition of William Kendridge. In the exhibition, what work did you like the most? My favorite work was Drawing for Waiting for the Sibyl. It's a drawing of a tree on a collage of dictionary pages. You see, some papers are not really glued, so they look like they are flying. He painted on them with blank Indian ink. I really like the technique. On every page, there are other sentences. Do you think that they have a special meaning? Yes, everyone else can read it differently and give different meanings to them, depending on their personal background and beliefs. For example, I also like the quote, do not complain. Everyone can reflect upon that, especially upon privilege. What about you? Do you like the work? Maybe. The tree is very nice, but it's uh, too much paper. I don't like the chaos uh, of it. Um, I also prefer more color. Which color would you have added? Uh, green. Okay, what work did you like in the exhibition? I really like the video more sweetly, play the dance. Why? It's interesting to see all these people holding different things. What do you feel when you see the work? I feel happy at first, because there is music and dancers, but afterwards I also have mixed feelings. There are also tragic things. There are people celebrating, but then there are dictators, women doing hard work, typing really fast. And you, what are your feelings about it? I like all of it. What did you think of the sick people? I don't really understand why some people dance and some are sick. Yes, I think it's difficult to understand all these differences. Maybe the artists wanted to show society the good and the bad. Look at the animation in the back also. There is a mix of different backgrounds. Do you like the drawings? Yes, I think that um, the artist worked really hard. Look at the details. I think so too. I personally find it very appealing, just like the music. Do you like the music in the video? Yes, but uh, it's very different from the music I normally listening to. What music are you listening to? I like American rock and you? I like pop music and I also listen to Italian music a lot. And when are you listening to music? Not often actually, mostly when I need to think, when I walk alone. Thank you Madi for seeing the exhibition together. I think the project was very interesting and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you too. It was nice to meet you. It was a little difficult because of the language, but I like the project because we saw a nice exhibition together. Hello, my name is Katrin and I'm from Luxembourg. And I am Iman and I am from Iraq. Iman is an artist. And Katrin works in a museum. In this dialogue, we want to share our thoughts on the William Kentridge exhibition and on art in general. When I start with this project, my intention was to meet people who like art as much as I do. I also wanted to feel the connection to art again like Dubai and Iraq. Seeing the exhibition, what is the first impression you have? I feel like being in a dream or a movie. I feel like walking inside the drawing. The work touched my heart. What about you? I feel like standing in William Kentridge's workshop, where I can observe every stage of his work. I also wonder about the meaning and the message of his work and where he gets his inspiration from. Ah. So you speak from uh, your mind and I speak from my heart. Maybe that's because you're an artist yourself. Did you have other thoughts on his work? The work here reminded me of the movie Mad Max. The use of design and furniture is similar to the objects William Kendridge is using for his sculptures. Yes, the artist uses materials and assembles objects we wouldn't usually think of at first sight, like a coffee pot or a cutter. His studio, I feel, is like a melting pot where everything is put together and created from scratch. Yes, he takes us from our reality and sends us to another. It is free to our imagination. 
After reading a bit about him, I noticed that his art originated from personal, political, and social event. Back in Iraq, I visited an artist in his atelier. We painted for two hours, but before that, we talked for two hours. I was a bit annoyed in the beginning. He was talking so much about his life. Then he asked me a question about my life. And I realized that I had this box in my chest, which I did not want to open. When I opened it, I saw my childhood, my life was very pretty. The artist told me, what you see about your life is the life of Iraq. Write it down. So in the end, there are three dimensions for an artist's work. The history of the artist, the history of his country, and the history of the world. Yes, although it feels very personal for the visitor, there are things that apply to everyone. Do you see something from your personal life when walking through the exhibition? When looking at the different landscapes, it made me think of when I was commuting a lot. When I was sitting in a train, I liked taking an hour to relax, looking outside the windows and taking a breath from busy life. What about you? When I saw more sweetly play the dance, I could really relate to some of these people's hardships. Did it remind you of your life in Iraq? Yes, in a very emotional way. You know, there was a girl there living in the street. She would ask for money or for food. I gave it to her, but I feel really bad about it now. Why didn't I take her in? Why didn't I go to her mother and say, I can't take care of your daughter, don't worry. I was really busy with my life. I had three boys to feed and educate, but still it makes me angry. Yes, the exhibition evokes different emotions, positive and negative ones. After we saw the exhibition, I have a personal question. What kind of art do you have in your house? I recently bought a painting by a Luxembourgish artist, Christian Feis. She often paints faces that are not only faces, but that should carry an expression. Oh, I really like it. Are you interested in any art movement specifically? I really like Surrealism by René Magritte. I think it's very clever, like the day and night painting. Everything looks correct and right, but it actually shows day and night at the same time. What does fascinate you about art? Because when you live in this life, you have a lot of work. There is your family, your job, your children. Sometimes you want to have something to take you away from it. Art makes me fly in the sky. When I make art, I forget everything around me. I just see the brush. It is the same as yoga. Art is another way of communication. You don't need words. It helps people to express themselves. This is true, not only for the artist, but also for the beholder. We can look at art and think and engage our minds in a new, different way. That's why it's interesting to share our point of views. I like seeing the exhibition and art in general from another person's perspective. It broadens your horizon. You see William Kentridge's work from the point of view of an artist, and I from the perspective of someone who works in a museum and likes art. So it's nicely complementary. It was nice to exchange and to see art with someone from a different background. Yes, I like talking uh, with you and people who are passionate about art. I also appreciate Yuana's help and support to channel our thoughts and emotions about William Kendra's art and put it together in this dialogue. I am Hassan. I'm from Afghanistan. I'm going to school at ACG. Hi, I'm Claire. Um, I'm Luxembourgish. I work at the Watonde and I've always been passionate about art and I thought it'd be an interesting initiative to take part in as it connects people through art. The first time uh, we saw the work of uh, William Kentridge, I thought uh, there was a lot of darkness and sadness in it and I was wondering why. So that's why we decided to talk about it. Why do you think there's so much darkness in his work? 
I think uh, he wants people to be uh, intrigued to ask question when they see so much darkness. The exhibition makes wonder about his life and the story of South Africa when you see that his work has so little color. I think you are right because I heard that Kentridge believes that you see the truth in the darkness and not by shedding light onto it. That's why I also think that he was uh, lonely and had problems, maybe with his family, and that's how he goes out of his way to go see less fortunate people. Indeed, he was going out of his way to see parts of history that have been erased or hidden and that are not visible to white people, to go to places where a person of his background would not normally go. And yes, it can be because he felt lonely and felt like he didn't deserve to be better off than the people he tried to picture in his art. What do you think, Hassan? Do you think he is someone who was sad? I don't know. I think he wanted to show other people's sadness and show how other people lived. Yeah, you're right. I think it's a bit of both. I think you need to be sad or maybe ashamed of the place you come from to draw something that's so dark. But for sure, he wanted to show other people's despair, especially the despair that was hidden to most of us. Why do you think he uses black color in his work? In color psychology, black symbolizes mystery, power, elegance, and sophistication. The color can also evoke emotions such as sadness and anger. But maybe he also just used it for contrast. But here there is so much black on his work that it gives me the impression that he's sad. Yes, true. I actually think he doesn't use black to symbolize sadness. I, for example, like to use black simply because it adds contrast and just because it's a simple color. Exactly, because it stands out on the white paper. I like simplicity and maybe he does too. Maybe he wanted people to focus on what he draws and not on the colors themselves. I also think black is more a result of the medium he uses which is charcoal. Maybe he used black to stand out, to be special, to create something that didn't exist before in that way and get attention. Why do you think he uses so much charcoal in his work? Because it is a medium that can be easily changed. He can easily erase something and add something new. That is especially good for his uh, animated movies because he can just draw something, take a picture and then erase part of it and add something new. I think you're right. I also think he uses it to show that there is room for the unknown. He can add things but also hide things. Also, it is a very messy medium, which symbolizes maybe the messiness of the history he shares in his work. Do you like dark colors? How do they make you feel? I like them. There is a bit of black. I personally like uh, every color. I just change the colors I use best uh, on the occasion. Why do you use black in your own work? Do you work with colors? I use black paint in some of my lino prints, but mostly I use black ink in my writings and drawings. I do these sort of mind maps with thoughts and in those I only use black pencil. I want to focus on the words and what I write about and less on the colors. In my lino prints and paintings I actually only use blue. Why? I think it's partially because I'm afraid to use color. I have not worked much with color partially because I think I want to focus on what I draw rather than the way it looks, plus one single color is a bit more impactful. Thanks for the exchange. It was very interesting to finish our discussion. What do you think of this experience? I really liked it. I think it was a great way to experience art a bit differently, to think about what I thought of the exhibition, rather than to think only about the intention of the artist. 
and I also think it's a great way to meet people from different cultures and to discover them while going through an exhibition. What do you think? It was my first time ever in a museum and I really like it, the experience. I like learning more about uh, art and different cultures. I love uh, that I got to meet uh, new people and learn about their culture. It was also a great way for me to improve my language skills. Mi chiamo Miriam Eleonora Borosco e sono italiana. Un gusto eh, Miriam, mi nombre è José Luis Palomino de la Mata, soy peruano, artista plástico y músico. Llegué en Luxemburgo el octubre pasado por una práctica. He estudiado crítica y curaduría de arte contemporáneo y soy también antropóloga cultural. Estoy súper contenta de estar aquí en el MUDAM y tener la oportunidad de dialogar con usted, José Luis, sobre la obra de William Kentridge. Fue una bonita experiencia el haber estudiado este tiempo la obra del gran artista sudafricano William Kentridge y al estudiar su obra he logrado identificar su lucha reivindicativa hacia la población nativa sudafricana, con la cual me siento muy identificado. ¿Por qué piensas que las esculturas de William Kentridge, en particular sus figuras humanas, tienen siempre la actitud de llevar cargas? Bueno, eh, sabemos que William Kentridge creció en la época del apartheid y de hecho su trabajo trata de la lucha de la población afro-sudafricana eh, ante la invasión blanca. Reconozco que en su obra hay un sentimiento muy fuerte ante cuestiones étnicas en relación en su país y especialmente en lo nativo eh, de su patria. Percibo que él es bien honesto con su obra y por esa razón precisa la obra de William Kentridge es muy reconocida. Yo personalmente identifico una procesión con su trabajo escultórico. Me acuerda una migración. Y veo también que sus figuras humanas tienen dificultad de marchar y avanzar. Para mí el trabajo de William Kentridge es muy puntual. De todas formas, el particular de su obra trascende y se hace universal. Y entonces comprensible para la mayoría. Estoy completamente de acuerdo con lo que piensa José Luis de la obra de William Kentridge. Estas cargas claramente son metafóricas también. ¿Por qué generalmente William Kentridge usa el blanco y negro? Bueno, por lo visto en su trabajo, esa tendencia viene directamente del dibujo en carboncillo que William Kentridge practicaba desde cuando era niño. No hay presencia de colores porque él... En su manera de pensar, la creatividad viene de las sombras y no de la luz. Las sombras cambian en todo tiempo y forman sus figuras. En su trabajo los colores no son importantes. En, bueno, y en mi trabajo son esenciales. ¿Puede explicar un poco cómo los colores son fundamentales en su práctica artística? Bueno, en mi práctica artística soy nacido en Lima, en la capital, y incluyo los colores de la cultura andina de mi país, traídos a la ciudad por la migración eh, a la capital. ¿Puede identificarse con la obra de William Kentridge? Claro, este, por supuesto, en la reivindicación hacia la población negra. Yo reivindico la misma causa de la lucha por la población afrodescendiente en mi país. Tengo la misma carga emocional y me identifico mucho con la diáspora de la población afro. ¿Qué hay del entorno de Sudáfrica en la obra de William Kentridge? Él consultaba libros europeos de historia del arte. Entonces, lo que él tenía como referencia visual eran los paisajes del viejo continente. En oposición con eso, él representa entornos que denuncian la presencia humana, en particular de explotadores. La maldad y los efectos negativos están evidentes en el entorno, cuyos recursos naturales y mineras fueron explotados. ¿Qué es lo que hace única la obra de William Kentridge? ¿Para ti es contundente? ¿Es política? Yo creo que su obra es por supuesto política. Él habla de una posición privilegiada, por cierto, pero sí, es política. Él puede hablar libremente porque no vive abajo del régimen y no va a ser encarcelado o torturado. 
Sin embargo, él opina que su obra no es política precisamente por las razones de arriba. ¿Cree que la obra de William Kentridge es trascendente? Bueno, yo creo que sí, porque se refiere justo al momento histórico preciso del apartheid y la lucha contra los explotadores de los recursos naturales. Para mí, su obra es digna de un luchador social. Ha sido un placer practicar con usted, José Luis, y aprender más sobre su práctica artística junto a la de William Kentridge. De hecho, me encantó ver cómo los dos comparten trayectorias en términos de trabajo y de tensiones sociales también. Ha sido, por supuesto, un proceso enriquecedor para mí también, como antropóloga cultural que espera que las instituciones culturales abran sus puertas para involucrar activamente las voces de las comunidades locales en sus programaciones. Espero que esta iniciativa siga en los próximos años y que se vuelva más y más inclusiva. Eso significaría todo para mí. Muchas gracias. Ha sido un gusto para mí haber participado en esta linda experiencia de estudio de la obra de William Kentridge, y haberla compartido contigo Miriam y con Loana. E igualmente conocer este, un poco más de, de este museo tan, tan maravilloso que es el Mudan y su trabajo en cuanto a la interrelación con el público visitante. Eh, muchas gracias por esta oportunidad.